everybody and welcome to Wine Text TV. This is episode one of what used to be called The Thunder Show. I did a thousand plus episodes, I did a couple of special ones of Wine Library TV. But as I start on this journey, 18 years to the day when I started Wine Library TV, I am rebranding it and this is episode one of Wine Text TV. Winetext.com, the single best way to buy wine on the internet in the world according to my father, Sasha Vaynerchuk. I know my dad and mom are watching, so big shout out to them. I'm really excited to be doing this show, and it's a very special show because 18 years ago today, I started my internet journey. It was the first time I ever made a piece of content for the internet ever. And I wanna thank everybody that follows me at Gary VEE on every platform, because we're going live here during the show. When I'm here, often I will be live, predominantly on Twitch, so twitch.tv slash Gary VEE, throw that up, Dustin. Uh, that is where I will be normally live if you wanna to continue to watch a show, but we will film these shows and post them across my social medias, including a recap show that will be a three or four minute version of the 20 minute show. So I'm excited, big shout out to all the people in the chat, Phantom, uh, Dr. Marlov, just thank you so much. Now what's super special about this episode is the team and I, great job Sid and team, we went out and found two bottles of the three bottles that were on the first episode of Wine Library TV. I literally tasted these exact wines 18 years ago. These exact vintages, the Verte 2001s, so I'm super excited about that. We'll be tasting those at the end. And because they're Cab California-based wines, we decided also to start the show with two of the big favorites of California today. Silver Oak has continued and this Josh has exploded. And I think if you were a TikTok fan, you're very aware, Josh just went viral on TikTok and has been a very popular wine over the last decade. I do not believe I tasted Josh in the history of Wine Library TV, but it is on episode one of Wine Text TV. So are we getting a little blurry there on that? Just a little? There it goes, got a little better. All right, here we go. For anybody who's never watched the show before, it's gonna be a very simple format. I will sit and I will taste four bottles of wine and that is how we will do it and that is the show. Let's go into the first wine of the reboot of Wine Library TV, now known as Wine Text TV. This is the Josh Cabernet 20, what year is this? 2021 Josh Cabernet $15 SRP. Um, you can find this somewhere between $12 and $20 a bottle around the country. 87 points wine enthusiast. One of the single most popular Cabernets in the country right now. And I'm excited to taste it. Like, you know, obviously this is a wine you see everywhere. If you're on Twitch right now, please comment if you've had Josh Cabernet before. Yes, this is live, everybody who's watching. Uh, comment if you've tasted or have had it uh, in the past. What, what do you think's going on with the in and out blur? But you're plugged into it, yes? Yeah. I, I mean, they're, they're not seeing it. Oh, they're not seeing it, it's just internal? Amazing, great. Okay, good, thank you, Sid. Sid is here, you know who else is here? And will be a mainstay on the show occasionally. I guess that's not a mainstay, but my best friend, Brandon Warnicke, who runs Wine Library and Wine Text. I'm basically having him here in a little bit of like an Ed McMahon, you know, like Conan has like, so I'll just throw it to Brandon occasionally because he's day to day in the wine business. I'm a little rusty. I got the gray hairs now, not the black hairs I started Wine Library TV with. So sometimes we'll throw it to him for a little color commentary, as they call it, on the sports networks. Let's get into the show, Sniffy Sniff, if you know what that means. Now the reason I created this Sniffy Sniff when I did Wine Library TV is I believe that most Americans and most people around the world do not smell their wines enough. They do not get the essence of the bouquet and it's a huge part of the experience. If you're watching this right now, many of you are not enjoying wine to your max capacity because you don't realize how much aromatics really play in to the taste. By the way, Sid, you mentioned it's not blurry but they were seeing it, on, Twitch was saying they saw it so maybe it's on Twitch, not the other social yeah, networks. Okay, so. cool, <laughs> let me know. The sniffy sniff, uh, they're also asking you to stop moving the camera there, uh, Dust, but only when I ask for Brandon. Or are you trying to fix things? Is that why you're moving it? That's right, don't worry about the centering. I'm an off-center kind of guy. <laughs> On the Sniffy Sniff, the first thing I smell is, I don't know if you remember Mr. Bubble Bubble Bath as a kid, but there's very much a soapy kind of like strawberry soap 
kind of thing going on. Almost what I would call fake fruit, almost like a marzipan, strawberry type thing on the nose that comes across. It's, it's aromatic and it's actually pretty pleasant, but it also smells a little bit like, if you go to five below the retailer, or you know, like there's like three dollar potpourri. Like it's clearly, you know, Crystal. Like not the most high end potpourri that one can buy at like a at a Nordstrom. This is like under five bucks potpourri. So like almost like a cheap potpourri on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. You are seeing ads right now. Mmm. Yes. One thing about Twitch. There are ads in between. So we need some people to buy tier one subs for people. All the OG Twitchers, please buy tier one subs for people because the Twitch ads are not allowing them to see the whole thing through. By the way, if you're watching on Twitch, if you are getting the ads, you can always watch the full show somewhere when it's all completely done. Let's go taste it again because I got distracted. That's why I'm not gonna do so many live, Sid, because I gotta lock in and really do the show. Very, very medium bodied. I call this a lighter style Cabernet. Solid fruit. Everyone's asking why you're spitting it out. I'm spitting it, well it's funny. I used to spit because I had to drive home to New Jersey. I don't do that anymore. (sighs) Holy crap. This is a revelation. (laughs) Wine Text TV is a place where I'll be able to actually drink wine instead of spitting like I did on Wine Library TV. Yeah, it's just, it's habit too. If you're a wine taster like Brandon and I are and you grow up in this business, you taste a lot of wines during the day, you're just spitting it because you don't want to be drunk at 1 p.m. And so, I'll continue, I like a spit bucket. I'll continue to spit. Let's go back to the Josh 2021 Cabernet. It's very obvious to me why This has become popular. It hits on the sugar factor that America loves. There's a dirty little secret in the wine business and in the consumer foods business, and it's really not a secret. Americans and the world like sugar. It tastes good. For me, this hits on a little bit of that, and I can see why this, Kendall Jackson, Santa Margarita, Yellowtail, all these wines through the years that get extremely popular tend to have that easy drinking flavor thing going on. What I'm, what I'm seeing here is a very okay wine. Um, it's a really tough way to start the reboot of Wine Library TV, now known as Wine Text TV. I was kind of hoping we could have a wine that I could highly recommend that everybody goes out and buys tons of that's easy to find, which is why I wanted to start with something that was a little bit more broad. But it's a little, it's, you know, what's tough for me when I do Wine Text TV or Wine Library TV is I just want to shoot it the way it is. And so without all the headaches that this will probably give my father at the wine library or all the politics that come along with this, I have to review these wines the way I see it. I see this as a very average wine. Um, It's fine. It's okay. Uh, I understand why there's a hoopla around it. It's because most of you are not trying different kinds of wines, which is a big part of why Wine Texas TV is going to work. what my plan is after this episode. This was a ceremonial episode. I tried to do something you could all find, but then I did something you can all find on the high end Then I'm doing the two wines I did for Wine Library TV. But going forward, I'm gonna try to show wines on this show that are either readily available or wines that I think have the potential to be underpriced because that's what I think a lot about. Just like in marketing, I think about day trading attention, what's underpriced attention. I got into marketing thinking that way because of how I think about wine. There's overpriced and underpriced wine. This is not expensive, but do I believe that there are a lot of wines from Bordeaux or Italy or Portugal or Spain or other parts of the world, New Zealand, Chile, Argentina? Do I know that I've had tons of wines by the glass that are 12 and 15 and six and nine and 13 and $14 bottles of wine that are far more complex, far more interesting, far more exciting than this wine? Yes, I do. And I think the 87 points from the wine enthusiast is not too far off. I'm gonna go a little lower. I think this is an 85 point wine. Big shout out to Wesley Walker, former New York Jets great wide receiver. He wore number 85. To me, this is an 85 point wine. And for all of you that are drinking this every day, like it's the one, you need to get off that. 
You need to go and explore other things. Of course it's better than the other crap $12 Cabernets that you're drinking, but if you're not exploring other parts of the world, you're missing out, or other grapes within California. There's a ton of Italian varietals. There's Cabernet Franc that I think could be done well. There's just a lot of different wines. I'm not impressed. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Just not that impressed. Silver Oak 2019 Cabernet, 94 points, James Suckling, SRP $100. Uh, you can find it cheaper in some parts of the world. It's also wildly available in most restaurants. This is really priced between 75 and 150 bucks a bottle throughout. Um, this is pretty much the premium version of this wine. This is the most popular cab or one of the most popular that you can find everywhere. This is one of the most popular along with Camus and a couple others, California Cabernets that are premium that you can go to your big time steakhouse, whether it's Ruth's Chris or Smith & Walensky's or anything that's bougie and, and find it. And so I'm excited about this. I've had a great journey with Silver Oak. Some years I love, some years I'm bored by. Uh, I'm excited to see what's going on here. Brandon, let's go to you for a little bit on the sidelines. Where is Silver Oak compared to when I was in my heyday 15 years ago? Still as popular, same range, a little less. What's your professional opinion? I would say still as popular. I mean, the two wines, right? Alex and Napa. And the Alex, I think, based on the price point, which hasn't increased a ton, I think is still pretty popular. The Napa is, is much more expensive. It's like 170, 180 bucks yeah. a bottle now. All right, let's go to this. Now, again, for everybody who's watching, sign up to winetext.com, a deal a day on the text service. Tell me in Twitch right now if you've signed up for Wine Text. I want to know where everybody is. Winetext.com, make sure you sign up. Uh, Silver Oak Cabernet, Alexander Valley, one of the most popular wines in all of California. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. On the nose, it has a little bit of a eucalyptus thing going on. This is one of more, uh, you know, kind of a little more accustomed to Heights Martha's Vineyard. I'm, I haven't had a lot of Silver Oak that's given me this exact kind of nose. Little hint of eucalyptus, kind of like, uh, Blackberry, black syrup on the nose. Big nose, complex, a little over the top. Let's give it a whirl. Really strong tannins, good mid body, mid palate, excuse me. <laughs> Name follows its reputation. Very oaky, very vanilla. I would almost call this like a, like a milkshake. There's a milkshake component to this wine. It's really like a strawberry milkshake. Very, oh, I almost can taste, what is it? What is that? Uh, what do you put, what is that? This whipped cream. Whipped cream, thank you. I can literally taste the whipped cream on the palate. Very creamy, very dessert-like, very delicious, similar to the Josh, and this is what happens in California. If you want to know why a lot of your most snobby wine friends diss California Cabernet and go Barolo, go Burgundy, go Europe, is because these wines get a little bit overdone. It's kind of like too much plastic surgery, too much filler, too much makeup, right? You know when somebody like is, doesn't want to age and they were so beautiful, but they just inject the crap out of themselves and they look weird? That's what happens with California Cabernets. It's just a little too much artificial intelligence. And so this wine's over the top and I believe is lacking the complexity that somebody that wants to pay 75 to 100 bucks would want to do. And so I don't want to start off 0 for 2 on this show. I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm disappointed. But that's exactly where we are. I have no idea what, Jay, by the way, James Suckling, a tremendous critic. Him and I just do not agree on this. And by the way, that's allowed. People like shrimp, people like uni, people have different tastes. One thing you should know about wine, please, when you watch Wine Text TV, do not buy or do not not buy what I do or don't like. I'm just gonna give you a consistent one man's subjective point of view on wine from his perspective. I will try to over articulate why I like them or don't like them. But please don't eliminate or include wines into your repertoire just because I like them. I'm no different than anybody else. I have my preferences and you must focus on what you like. The key to Wine Text TV and the journey that I'm gonna try to take you on is getting you to try new things that you never have before. That's what Wine Text is about. As a matter of fact, 
Brad, I want you to send today's wine of the week. On Wednesdays we do wine of the week. We're gonna send wine texts, wine of the week again. It exploded today, it was a monster. We've got a little bit left. I'm gonna ask him to send it on text again because all of you missed today's if you're new to the show or to wine text. So sign up for winetext.com to get the same reason we love wine text. The wine we sent today comes from Mouton Rothschild which makes $600 Bordeaux. This is from the southwest of France, this wine. Today was 20 bucks by the case, 30 bucks by the bottle, yep. right? That's gonna get people to try new wines. That's the point here. And the same here. Maybe when I say out loud, Josh and Silver Oak are maybe you say, maybe that's true. Maybe I am getting tired of it. And maybe I should try other things. And that is the purpose of the show. I don't see it, James Suckling. I don't see 94. I see 88. And I think that's me being kind because I'm in a good mood because it's the first episode. It's just not there. It's, it's fine. If this was 38 bucks, I'd be like, all right, I'm not paying 150 bucks for that. Okay, we have to get another episode pretty quickly because these wines you're not gonna find. I don't even know how you guys found them. So those wines you can find, but again, try them if you want to. Um, but anyway, uh, the, we gotta get another episode of four wines that people can find and hopefully we'll find something we like here, but let's go to the icons. These were the first wines I've ever had. This is the Verte La Désir, uh, Le Désir uh, 2001. This is a, a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and a hint of Malbec. Uh, Pierre Salamant is the uh, winemaker. This is very aged California. Please try this, Brandon. Brandon! Let's go to Brandon for a second, a little wine talk. Brandon, you were just at Wine Paris. Yes. You looked at hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of wines. That's why I love wine text. We literally look at tens of thousands of deals, Sid, to find 365, we send one text a day. What was your biggest observation of what you saw in Wine Paris last week? Uh, well, talking about these first two wines, maybe the Josh, for example, just what you said about finding other values on the great wines and exploring from other areas of the world, Portugal, Spain, Languedoc, you just saw those couple of deals that yes. they put through on Languedoc. So what Brandon's talking about is there's a text thread with me, him, and Jeff DeRose where I'm looking at deals. There's a Pinot Noir and Chardonnay that is mind-boggling that's gonna be well-priced under 20 bucks for French Pinot Noir and Chard. You know, those wines, in my opinion, are $45 in California mm -hmm. of that quality. Mm -hmm. But And by the way, in parts of France too, in Italy too, it's that Languedoc. Friends, it's just market. Get Brandon out of here, right here. Friends, it's just marketing. You're overpaying for the names. And that's just how the world works. You think of Gucci handbag is in premium because it says Gucci on it? Same thing in the wine world. But you need to try things. So many of you, please say in the chat right now, what are you drinking right now? A lot of you are drinking the same Pinot Noir, the same Chardonnay, the same, you know, Pinot Grigio, over and over and over. Did you taste it? Oh, you're giving some to sip. Yeah. All right, this is very stinky on the nose, like which I love. I love stinky. This is like like topsoil from like a landscaper that's been working for. And honestly, not only not only does this smell like topsoil, let me take that out. This smells like topsoil caught in the fingernails of a landscaper that's been working in 101 degrees in San Diego and sweating. So you're getting the sweat and the top. And Crystal's face is like a, she's like devastated. No, no, Crystal. This is what we like in wine world. It is stinky. It is stinky and it's earthy and it smells great. Is it because it's so old? Yeah, the, the oxygen gets through the cork a little bit and so it starts to funky it a little bit. So it goes from more fruit to like less over time. I wish Zucks or like Elon could figure this out so you could taste along with me. I wish I could put technology on my tongue right now and let you taste the difference of what these two wines are. One is like cotton candy over top fake. One is very like earthy and natural and real. And everyone's palate, by the way, sometimes it's fun to go out and have a rager and have a crazy night. And other times it's nice to have like a meaningful dinner and a meaningful conversation. Sometimes it's fun to have dessert every meal. Other times it's nice to have like a steak dinner. These are very different that way. Now, this is more medium body, tastes more Bordeaux-like, nice smooth finish, 
really, I'm glad, wherever you bought it, let's, that's a big shout out to that retailer because this has been preserved properly. Not, you know, sometimes with older wine, the sun got into it, things of that nature. Very elegant. I like this, it's Bordeaux-like, and it's made like a Bordeaux by California. Also, 2001 was an iconic vintage. Um, this was scored 97 points by the legendary Robert Parker, the most influential and important wine critic in the history of the American wine business. That's an outlandish score, which is why I started with these wines when I started the show. Um, I don't know if I feel like it's rated that way today, but this is well made. To me, this is a 93 point wine. This is extremely good. How much did we pay for this, do you remember? I think it's $300. 300 bucks? Yeah. So it's expensive. Like, you know, look, this is, sent, this is actually a great way, moment to say this. This is sentimental wine to me. This was the wine, this might, I actually gotta go look back at the episode. Do you guys know which is the first of the wines I tasted? The I one that we Le couldn't get? Le Joie was the first wine I ever had? Zier is the one, yes, I think Le Joie, Zier, you drank it and you didn't spit it out because you said it was tough to spit silk. Love that. Why didn't you guys tell me this was the first one so I could have symbolically done it as the first one? You just, did, you just did your thing. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like to produce. I like that you say it You don't like to produce, remember? I was excited for you to taste it. Bye, Death Trace. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Sign up for winetext.com. Do you remember why you picked these? That first day? Yeah. I mean, I know they were so hot at the time. They were so hot. And we had just gotten them in, I remember. I just got them in. Yeah. I was yeah, dying yeah. to taste them. Yeah. And honestly, like, and look, you can go watch the first episode. Actually, in the recut, put it up right now. I literally, in the episode, say, I think we got something. Because I was thinking about it. The thing with me, whether it's me, friends, Vayner Media, like, I'm spontaneous, but subconsciously I've been thinking about it. Right. So, like, in the first episode of Wine Library TV, 18 years ago today, I literally say, we think we've got something here. Right. Clearly, we had something. Um, so, you know, I, I, the reason I tasted these was, I thought they were serious wines, yep. and, and I also they were, and they were at the time, and, and and I thought they could get really hot. They didn't get as hot as I thought, but I thought I literally thought about a moment like today of like when I look back, and, you know, and watch this episode, I want them to be serious wines of the movement that I was excited to be a part of, which was the new California premium movement that was a little more balanced, mm -hmm. not the over the top, mm -hmm. not the silver oak movement, mm -hmm. you know, so. Anyway, here we go, last wine of the day. Let's see what we got here. La Joie, 2001, 95 plus points, Robert Parker. This literally is listed as drink through 2071. You know how insane it is? You could sell this for 50 years. 71% Cab, 19 Merlot, 10% Cab Franc, same winemaker. Uh, if you are watching on twitch.tv slash GaryVEE, which for everybody who's watching now on the actual episode, please go there, sign up and subscribe. I will often stream this show live on there. If you're watching right now on Twitch, this is about the part of the show where I'm gonna answer a question or two from here. Brandon, please look at the chat, keep an eye, maybe make notes of your favorite wine question. People are gonna start asking. Um, uh, chef. The Le Vertes turned out to be a good investment because, I don't know if you watched, they were like in the 80s, right? Or 60s or 70s in that episode, do you remember? Yeah, yeah 60s or 70s. Yeah, so they were $60, $70 18 years ago, now they're 300 so yeah, turned out to be an investment for sure. Yeah, chat was on the Thunder Cruise. Shout out to Mott. Jacob Josh was on the, the Thunder Cruise, was amazing. A cruise of the wine show. Yeah, please, Brandon, keep an eye on there. Give me some shout outs to the OGs. Okay, thanks. You can't see? <laughs> it's a little blurry. Really, your eyes are that bad? Yep. My eyes are bad too now, and I can't see anything. That's one big challenge from the, this new show. All right, let's taste this wine. This is fun. This wine has held up stronger because of the Cabernet. This is predominantly Merlot. This Cabernet has a stronger backbone, and I love, love, I mean, I like this wine better. It's funny, this wine has aged better uh, I think of the two, very strong tannins. 2071 makes sense. This wine tastes like it's a brand new wine all these years later. This is why if you have a wine cellar, it's incredible to be able to buy great wines and put them away and stick to them. Uh, let me just finish this review, Dustin, and we'll answer a couple of wine questions before we get out of here. Great structure, chocolate, dark chocolate, high dark chocolate, more than milk chocolate, like you know the good stuff, right? Not a Snickers bar, which is delicious, by the way, but the $23, you know, 
chocolate bar that you buy at like Air One because it's like from a very small part of like Guatemala handled by people that have lived on that land for 400 years, held and blessed by a monk, that kind of chocolate bar, that's the flavor on here. Really beautiful blueberry jam. Chris is watching. SS Chris is here. SS Chris, I miss you, brother. This is so exciting. Think about the whole crew, Kahuna, SS Chris, all of you. Tim F. Like, think about all of you. Those are the greatest days. I'm glad to bring back the show. Wine Text TV episode one. Great structure, great tannins, very long finish. This would pair extremely well with many foods. This is a 96 point wine. Incredible value, even at 300 bucks. This rivals, the, and wine's gone up. Bordeaux's now are five, 600 bucks when they come out. This wine rivals that old wine, beautiful wine. So this is the winner of the day, the Joie, Lily Desir. The Silver Oak and the Josh were incredibly average at best. But that is the reviews for the first ever episode of Wine Text TV. Sign up for winetext.com to get a great wine deal of the day, every day. What questions do we have, friends, as we wrap up this first episode? And by the way, episode two, I will challenge Brandon to give me four wines that are readily available and or types of wines that are available so that you can explore and find your favorite wines. Also, everyone, please sign up, Instagram, TikTok, and everybody on every other platform. Please sign up to winetext.com. We're gonna send today's wine of the week out. It was our biggest one of the year. Uh, we've got a little bit left. We're gonna send it out because I know a lot of you are just signing up and I wanna make sure you get a chance to get today's remarkable wine. What question can I answer for anyone? Brett GM asks, please explain how tannins taste. Tannins taste bitter. It's the thing that most of you do not like about red wine. It's the bitterness. It comes from the skin of the grape and it's a real fact. Of Corso walking in. Yes, Corso? Ooh, an oak monster card? A possible giveaway, maybe. I want to give this to Tim F. That's who deserves it. Just give me I think a mark. He has a sleeve on. Give me a, give a mark. Right there, yeah. Here we go. Give this. I'm making it out to Tim F. Tim F. I love you. For everybody who's wondering what I'm talking about, Tim F. and many other other people that are watching on the show right now, watch me back in the day for those five years. I met many of them. I went to Napa with Tim F., uh, which was lovely. Send that to Tim F. Please. Thank All you. Right. Uh, any other questions? The Gold Queen asked, which wine is great after a long day of bad meetings? That is why I'm doing this show, and I'll wrap up with this. Uh, I'm doing this show because I want to help all of you discover incredible wines, predominantly in the $15 to $30 range. One thing that I'll end this show with is that many of you like wine and drink wine and you buy a lot of wine at $12 and under. That's fine and that's remarkable and people are in different budgets. What I wish people knew is the second you go to 15, things change fast. So the $15 wines you can buy compared to $10 wines you can buy, the quality often, not always, there's tons of bad $50 wine, but the wine that you can buy, this stinks, I don't even like, I'm so upset that I didn't have like a wine people can go out and buy yet. We gotta do an episode right away. I'm gonna cancel something next week, I gotta do an episode next week. Anyway, the amount of wine you could buy from 15 to 20 that is remarkable. And all of you are not experiencing it. We're going into the warmer time of the year. I'm so glad we're starting at this time of year. The fact that we're going into April, May, June, the amount of rosés, the amount of white wines that you've never had, Verdicchio and, Re, and white Rioja and white Bordeaux and everyone's now hot on Sancerre in a way they weren't when I did Wine Library TV. But all the Sauvignon Blanc alternatives in Touraine and other, uh, all these other places around the world including parts of New Zealand, uh, Casablanca, Chile, like, like Tarantas, from the, the South America, like the Portuguese wine scene is out of control. We were hot on it 15 years ago. It's even crazier. So, Picpol, absolutely. Alsace. There's so much great wine out there. And the reality is, when I look around, even when I look on social media, people are not talking enough about those wines. So, I wanted to bring this back, get back in the saddle. What's happened since I've been on Wine Library TV is my relationship with wine has actually strengthened. I drink wine as a fan now much more because it's not my day-to-day -day business and I would actually argue in some ways my palate is not as sharp and my knowledge is not as sharp and in other ways I think I can be a great host for all of you 
because I'm in it with all of you much more than I was back then. And so I'm really excited to have these moments with all of you, share these episodes with all of you, get back in the saddle, bring back the Thunder Show with a new makeup. Wine Text TV is here, episode one. I think we have something here. Uh, And I, I think we're gonna enjoy this. And most of all, because I'm so connected to so many that are 21 to 35 around the world because of my content, being the catalyst like I was for many of you to get into wine, I had no platform. Nobody in the world knew who I was. Today, I'm gonna do this show now and many of you know who I am. Many more people are gonna consume this across all platforms and my ability to turn a 26 year old who's watching right now that does not even consider wine into trying to try a wine or the amount of people right now that are watching that drink Josh all the time and think it's the greatest and they're like, wait a minute, what does Gary mean by that? It's not that Josh is bad. It's just that there's so many wines to try at $12 to $20 a bottle that are red wines that are equally delicious or more interesting. There's just like so many things you haven't had yet. And that is what winetext.com, winetext TV is gonna do. And so we're gonna help you. Uh, we're not gonna pick the tagline here. For all the OGs, you know we came up with a lot of taglines. No tagline. We're, you, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna say that, I'm not gonna pick my taglines just yet. I did the opening like I did the old show. I'm not gonna do you with a little bit of me. We're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not. What I'm gonna say is, the wine world needs continued change. Most of you are not exploring enough. I'm here to help you explore it, and we will do it again. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the opportunity to be back, and uh, I hope I see you soon. Thank you, love you, have a great day.